Hello, everyone. This is criminal profiler Pat Brown, and I want to talk about drugs and the southern border of the United States and how we are dealing with it and what we are telling the public or what the media is telling the public. Recently, many of you probably are aware of, there were uh, some people from South Carolina who drove down to Brownsville, Texas, crossed over the Mexican border into Matamoros. Uh, there were three men and one woman. Uh, there were actually five people who took the trip. One of the woman, women didn't have the proper documentation to cross over the border. At least this is a story given. And uh, she stayed in a, ho a hotel room on the other side. Um, meanwhile, the other four crossed the border, supposedly because the woman who wanted a tummy tuck and was going to one of the facilities there. And the other three, the other three that were with her were just accompanying her over the border. And they drove from South Carolina. They rented a vehicle and drove all the way from South Carolina, 20 hours to the border, the five of them for this one woman's tummy tuck. I, I find the, the story a little bit not as believable as many people do. I find it a little bit strange, but, um, at any rate, supposedly the Gulf cartel mistook them for drug dealers uh, or, or another another group of cartel people or, or Haitians. Uh, they had a bunch of different stories and they kidnapped them and two of them ended up dead. Uh, eventually the other two were, were saved. Uh, they were brought back to the United States. Um, meanwhile, the Gulf cartel actually sent this cute little note saying, oh, sorry, are bad. Um, and we, they, they, these lower level guys made a mistake. Uh, they, they're just a bunch of idiots. And here, the, and they gave them five guys who probably they didn't like anyway and wanted to get rid of. But regardless of the what actually happened in that whole episode, people were very upset with Mexico. They're like, wait a minute, you know, we have Americans go to Mexico and they get killed in Mexico by the drug cartels. And what are you doing about your drug cartels down there? Why are you allowing this to happen? Your, your government sucks. And, you know, oh, what do you, you, know, uh, you if you only did something, we wouldn't have this drug cartel problem. Really? All right. <laughs> Let's examine this a little bit more. All right. The Gulf cartel works uh, on, the, they're on the border of Mexico there and Matamoros area. But they also, there, there are people from them who cross into Texas, into an area. Let me read you this. The lower Rio Grande Valley in the South Texas border area. That's one of the primary smuggling corridors for the bulk cash shipments destined from Mexico. So this is where the cartel operates, on the Mexican side and on the U.S. side. But do you think they don't have U.S. people helping them out? Oh, just you wait to hear this because this has not been carried by any of the major networks. I had to find this, some little small, small local networks and also the DEA site, but not on the big networks. And this is, you won't believe this. This is just, this is just appalling. So anyway, the lower Rio Grande Valley in Texas is where they do a lot of their trafficking through. They exploit the high concentration of border crossings and cross-border traffic in the area for bulk cash uh, smuggling operations. Uh, it goes on, they take these cash shipments, they originate from the western markets of the United States and also from the eastern half, and they all go through, from all over the United States, they come through there. Now, traffickers in the South Texas border area also use other mon money laundering methods. Keep this in mind, other money laundering methods in an attempt to conceal their illicit drug proceeds. Some traffickers establish cash intensive businesses, including automobile repair shops, restaurants, construction companies, and transportation companies to mask the nature of their funds. They commingle illicit drug proceeds with profits generated by those businesses to conceal the source of their funds. Uh, some traffickers also use money services businesses such as electronic wire transfer businesses and money transmitters to launder their drug proceeds. All right. So in other words, money transmitters are located throughout the United States and enable drug traffickers in most drug markets to wire drug proceeds to the South Texas border or directly to Mexico. All right. So now here is what you don't hear. Let me tell you about something that happened 
relatively recently. All right. This came out March 8th, 2023 on local news. This is the headline. Har Harling, I don't know how you pronounce Harlingen, uh, Wells Fargo Bank. They're, they're on the border of, uh, of uh, uh, Texas and Mexico. The Wells Fargo Bank manager was sentenced for laundering 410,000 in drug money. Now, mind you, when they, when they sentence you for 410,000, it doesn't mean that's all you ever did. A bank manager at Wells Fargo, a man who was employed as a Wells Fargo bank manager in Harlingen was sentenced for his role in a nearly two year long money laundering scheme court records indicate. Stephen Roland Reyna. Now, mind you, they didn't even, the local, none of these have his picture anywhere. I actually found his picture on LinkedIn and it said he hadn't been posting lately. <laughs> I guess not. Um, but his picture, why is his picture blasted everywhere? He's a drug trafficker. He's laundering money for the Gulf cartel. That's the same cartel that killed those people in Matamoros that were also, oh, but he's, he's laundering drug money for them. He is a drug cartel member if he does that. All right. And get this. He was sentenced Wednesday. Oh, thank God. To 20 months, 20 months in prison on a charge of conspiracy to launder money instrument, a monetary instrument. The indictment charges Reina and a co-conspirator, uh, David Mares, who is a local businessman, by the way, with, and I can't find his picture there either anywhere or anything about him and his, and his uh, indictment, uh, David Mares, with participating in the laundering scheme from August 2016 to 2018. According to the indictment, Mares was a, quote, participant in a narcotic smuggling organization, the Gulf Cartel and would ship multiple pounds of cocaine from Texas to other states. The money from the deliveries would be deposited into Wells Fargo bank accounts, where Reyna was employed as a bank manager at a branch in Harlingen, the document stated. Co-conspirators in other states would deposit money from the shipments into the accounts, and then the cash would be withdrawn at the bank in Harlingen. Reyna would direct his employees to authorize withdrawals that involved the proceeds of the sale of the controlled substances for co-conspirators who made the withdrawals, the indictment stated. The indictment further states, Reyna bypassed bank protocols as well as instructed his employees to bypass bank protocols. Reyna would then be paid a portion of the cash withdrawals. In all, Reyna assisted the laundering of 410,000 in drug sale proceeds. A news release from the U U.S. Attorney's Office stated, here's a great quote here. If you help drug traffickers clean their money, you will be prosecuted, said U.S. Attorney Alamar Alamdar Hamdani in the release. It's especially disappointing that a bank manager for Wells Fargo chose to violate his position of trust for easy money, money from organizations that are destroying our communities. It's disappointing. No, it's massively criminal. The guy's a drug trafficker. I don't care if you want to support money laundering. He's helping draft traffic drugs. That's what he's doing. He's a drug trafficker. He works for the Gulf cartel on our side of the border, on our side of the border. He's a drug cartel operate. And what does he get? 20 months. My God, I think you can get more for shoplifting. But oh, it's it's okay. There's more. As part of his sentencing, Reyna is ordered to serve an additional 16 months of supervised release aw, and must report to probation 72 hours of his release. I think after his release, I think they mean that. According to federal records, Marius is scheduled to be sentenced on April 5th. That's why I haven't seen what Marius has gotten. All right. Seriously? We're pissed off at Mexico for not doing anything about the drug cartels? 
They're operating all over the United States. Don't you believe that they're not? They are in every big city. They're in small cities. They're everywhere. They're running their drugs throughout the United States. The drug cartels are here in the U.S. and they are employing people in the United States to do their work. Those So the drug cartel members are not just south of the border, they're north of the border. And this piece of garbage from Wells Fargo is one of them. And he gets 20 months, 20 months? He should have gotten 20 years. 20 months? That's a slap on the wrist. Hey, I don't know how much he actually picked up. Oh, he supposedly only, sm only smuggled, uh, did laundering for $410,000. Okay, that's what you got him for. I don't know how much he really did. I don't know how much he's really made. I'd like to see his bank account. I'd like to see the kind of car he drives, the house he lives in for being a bank manager. I'd like to know all those things. I want to know if he's put some money aside. So after his little 20 months, and maybe out early for good behavior, he can then pick up the rest of the money that he's got down there. Who knows? But it, it, that is absolutely appalling. And the United States, in my opinion, has been hiding the level of drug activity in this in this country. People around all around the country, we know, are dying daily. They're dying and dying and dying of drug overdoses. We have so much so much drugs in this country now. It's absolutely astronomical. I mean, when I was at the age where I could have been interested in something like that, we had homegrown weed. <laughs> I mean, I know there was a little LSD running around, but my God. There was nothing like this. The level of cocaine, opioids, meta methamphetamine, everything that's just fentanyl that's flowing through the United States. It didn't get here without the help of the United States. So stop pointing fingers at Mexico. I mean, we have a border which is completely open, open to the drug cartels, absolutely 100% open to the drug cartels. And they're just rushing across. And they are setting up operations in every state in the United States. And they have, they, their activities here are, they are doing, doing wonders for themselves. Let me put it that way. And they're killing Americans. But hey, there's a border and we have our people up here and we're not going to do a dang thing about the border. And we're not. We're just allowing it to flow right across. And when we do catch somebody, what do we do? 20 months. 20 months. I'm just... I'm appalled. I mean, 20 months for laundering money for the drug cartel, for being part of the Gulf drug cartel. So yes, let's all talk about, oh, those four, those four Americans, they went over, they went over the border for a tummy tuck and, oh, they got, they got mistaken for drug, drug, drug people, you know? Oh, that's just horrible. What is wrong with Mexico? What the hell is wrong with the United States? That's what I want to ask. You don't point fingers at somebody else when you can't even manage your own business on this side. Americans are dying huge numbers because we do not seem to be looking and, and doing anything about drug, uh, drug dealing, drug cartels in the United States of America. And the, if you look at the major media channels, nothing. They hardly ever report on drug issues. They're like quiet. They're so, so quiet about that, well, except for when it's happened somewhere else. But when it happens in the U.S., it's dead silent. Why is that? Who's, who, who is not? Why, why is nobody talking about the drug issue that we have that is killing our children, that is killing our young people, that's killing our, everybody we know? I, I asked my son one day, I said, do you know anybody who's died of a drug overdose? And he's like, one, two, three, four, five. And this is, and my son doesn't touch anything like that, but he does know people. And it, we live in a pretty nice area. Oh my God, you know, it's reaching, it's reaching its tentacles out everywhere in the United States. And I'm just absolutely disgusted that the United States is not doing something about the drug cartels that are taking over the United States of America. That's a little soapbox for me tonight. But I, when I saw this Wells Fargo thing, I could not believe it. We have tons of our, the CNN, MSNBC, Fox, everybody. Let's talk about what happened to Matamoros with those South, Amer South Carolinians who drove over the border. Well, why don't you talk about what happens on our side of the border? Where are you? Where are you then? Why didn't? Why are you not talking about what happened? Wells Fargo, manager from Wells Fargo, money laundering. Eh. 
20 months. My ass. Um, hmm, unbelievable. Anyway, I'll calm down now. No, I won't. But anyway, if you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, and be pissed. Be pissed as me because it just too many people are dying and we got to do something about it. But we're not. Next time.